Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Be Well, Be Keto. And today's guest is Wade Lightheart. Now, this is not your typical show because we are talking about other ways for you to actually heal your body, which a lot of the latest research says it starts in your gut. And many of you know that that has been one of my priorities this year. And so I really wanted to get Wade on the show because he has so much knowledge on healing your gut. And it's pretty cool because at the end of the show, he talks about a special link and a special offer for the listeners where you can go to his website and enter in a special code that you can save 20% off of anything that they have. And they have some amazing products, probiotics, enzymes, and different things to heal your gut and to do better cleansing. So Wade is a three-time Canadian all-natural bodybuilding champion who competed as vegetarian, former Mr. Universe competitor, host of the Awesome Health podcast, and he is one of the world's premier authorities on natural nutrition and training methods. Having majored in sports science at the University of New Brunswick, he has authored numerous books on health, nutrition, and exercise, which have sold in over 80 countries. Wade also serves as an advisor to the American Anti-Cancer Institute and is the co-founder and director of education at BioOptimizers, a digestive health company. So the website that you could go to, I'm going to tell you now, but you can go to the show notes page and click the link, but it's buyoptimizers.com forward slash high energy. And the code is high energy 20, all in caps. Okay. Sometimes you have to do that, those with companies. So I'm super excited for you to hear this awesome conversation. Wade is a bucket of knowledge. You might have to slow it down to half time just to soak in all the juicy details or listen to it twice. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So let's go say hi to Wade. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Be Well, Be Keto, the show that highlights ordinary people achieving extraordinary results and changing their lives for the better with a ketogenic diet. You too can be healthier and live better by adopting this amazing lifestyle. If you are new to the show, new episodes go live every Wednesday for your encouragement and support. And all show notes can be found at BeWellBeKeto.com. Listen each week and add the show to your favorites on your best podcast app. And if you know any cool people that would like to share their story, please contact us at support at highenergygirl.com. And if you want to follow us on social media, which I highly recommend, you can either join our Facebook group called High Energy Girls, if you're a girl, or follow us on Instagram and YouTube at The High Energy Girl. Now let's get to this week's episode with your host, Tracy Luheich. Yep, that's me. Hey everyone, this is Tracy and I have a special announcement. In order for me to help more women age stronger, I have created a 90-day one-on-one coaching program. And the goal here is to teach women over 50 how to age stronger, while burning fat and boosting energy without going hungry or living in the gym. If you'd like more information, please hit me up at tracy at highenergygirl.com or friend me on Facebook and send me a message. I have a goal of transforming a thousand women in the next year, and I hope you are one of them. Hey, Wade, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Great to be here, Tracy. Thank you for having me. Well, I am a self-proclaimed stalker of people that have amazing wisdom and because I just want to kind of learn everything that you've got. And I've really enjoyed your service to people that are health seekers. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for thank you for letting me know. Uh, that's what we do it for. <laughs> well, I'm a YMCA teacher, so I teach fitness classes. And one thing that we always talk about at the Y is health seekers. And and for the listeners that don't know this, on Wade's website, if you, um, I'll have him talk talk to you guys about it. But he has this video series that's like 84 different topics. And that is just amazing. So we'll we'll give you guys a link to all that later. But Wade, for the listeners that don't know you, why don't you let them know a little bit about what you what you do? Okay, great, sure, thanks. Um, so I'll try and be uh, try and make a long story short. Basically, I grew up in Eastern. 
Canada, just north of Maine, uh, between north and west of Maine, or east, north and east of Maine, uh, a place called New Brunswick. It was very cold. Uh, did played hockey, did all the kind of normal stuff. Nothing extraordinary in my life until when I was 15 years old, three big things happened to me that kind of set my course in my life. And I didn't realize at the time, but one, my sister, who was four years my senior, uh, was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, a form of cancer of the lymph nodes. And I watched her go through the medical model before she died at the age of 22. So that was really impactful. And uh, of course, that's tragic and everybody's been touched by cancer. And the, what, the thing was, because it was at a formative age, I think it impacted me and set my course and direction for health performance and optimization because I realized that health isn't a guarantee and life isn't a guarantee. So I think I took a lot more risks in life than a lot of people because of that. And I also had a very, very big focus on health and performance. The other thing was, is my parents at the same time had moved to a very rural place. So it was literally five miles to my nearest neighbor. I was in the middle of the woods. The telephone poles ended at my door. And <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I didn't have any, I, I was removed from my friends. I was removed from my situation. So I had a lot of time to think, a lot of time to contemplate, a lot of time to be in nature and a lot of time to read. And I all also was given a, a bodybuilding book by my sister who had Troy Zaclato on the cover, Mr. California at the time, blonde haired guy like me. And I, I was saw this gigantic muscle man with these beautiful girls on the cover. And I was like, wow, maybe that's how you get him. You know, being 15, you're pretty ignorant about the thing. So I bought into the Joe Weider lie and I started I started lifting weights and that led me to university exercise, studied exercise physiology. I felt the education, although it gave me a background, was incomplete. And then I started following mentors after that, people that were performing uh, what I call high levels of performance that led me to a coaching relationship with Scott Abel, the premier bodybuilding coach, which led eventually to me winning a bunch of Canadian championships, going to Mr. Universe, entering into the nutrition world, and I'll virtually from every level on that moving forward. And then I started a company with Matt Gallant, my business partner in 2004 to fix digestive issues because I had, when I went to the Mr. Universe, I had, um, uh, I went literally, I it was in 2003. After that contest, I went from Mr. Universe to Mr. Marshmallow. I gained 42 pounds of fat and water. Now I had the best coaching. I had super discipline. I thought I was doing everything right, but I met a doctor and uh, afterwards and I was like, what am I doing wrong? This guy was in his seventies. He was like, super vibrant he had clear skin and his eyes looked through and he was very strong i was like this guy was everything i wanted to be and i was like wow this guy's like in way better condition and i asked him what what am i doing wrong i'm supposed to be doing everything right and he said wait you've learned to build the body from the outside in you haven't learned to build the body from the inside out and that really had an impact on me because i just assumed that everything I ate turned into energy or everything I ate turned into building blocks or, you know, I didn't, even though I knew some of the physiology or the functionality of how our digestive system worked, I had literally severely compromised that mind, which led to the weight gain, led to the health challenges, led to all these different things. And I followed his protocol, rebuilt myself inside out using enzymes, probiotics, and a variety of other little nutrients and uh, changed my life. And uh, after six months, I felt amazing. I got my physique back. And uh, I went out and started coaching other people. And since that time, we've helped over 50,000 people correct their digestive systems. Wow. Okay. That is, that's awesome. So what do you attribute to you gaining weight after your show? Well, you have to go into the, the, what led to before that. And really, it was following what I would call a highly restrictive performance-based cosmetic diet. Now, I'm going to unpack that. What does that mean? In, the, in, in our society today, and this is really important for people to understand, we have images of athletes, models, actresses, famous people you know, on the cover of every magazine or on Instagram or Facebook or who are looking at their peak performance at a particular time and they use those pictures uh, to promote a certain quote unquote body ideal. And what will happen is whether it is through a performance-based culture or a self-esteem or wanting to be more attractive or whatever the inner motivations that seek us to go for that, what I call a cosmetic look. And bodybuilding, in, for the most part, is a cosmetic sport. You know, it's very much like the beauty industry. It's like you're doing all this stuff to look a certain way on the outside, 
doesn't necessarily focus on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is I was on an extremely restrictive diet for an extended period of time. And, you know, and what happened is that diet, although it got me into the, let's say, uh, external ideal, it set me up for an internal failure. And this is quite common, particularly in the fitness industry. It's also uh, very common in the celebrity industry. You see the people going in and out of uh, of you know the the magazines and or the tabloids, you know so and so gained thirty pounds and then she lost forty and then she gained it back again. You see this all happening, and I didn't understand why at the time, but now I do, and I realize that that many of these kind of quick fix, short term, externalized motivators wind up really damaging your health, and that's not that's the people who are motivated. Then there's a all the other people who are just struggling because they're living the industrial food lifestyle program, which also have compromised their digestion. So we have both sides. If you don't do anything and just do what everyone else does, you mess up your digestion. If you're going for one of these cosmetic ideas, you mess up your digestion. So it's like, why is this happening? And that's what I've spent the last 15 years working on. Okay. Interesting. So I found you on Bulletproof Radio. I'm a huge fan. And I immediately went and, you know, just absorbed all your information, went out and bought the probiotics, bought the enzymes. So why don't you just share a little bit with the listeners about what sets you guys apart and what the whole goal of taking probiotics and enzymes is? You know, if I, if I could, I'm going to back up just a little bit before cool. that because I want people to understand di the digestive process. And okay. I think if you understand the digestive process – then you'll kind of understand what we do as a company. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm going to do this really, really quick, and we're going to do this in layman terms, but this is the most important information anybody can learn about their health today in the industrialized world. It really is. And so we have a process of digestion. Most people think I eat the food, it goes in the system, and then it does its thing. We don't really think about how that process is. But there's five stages to digestion. There's the first phase, the taste, touch, smell, and chew the food. Uh, your body will start to recognize what it is and, and actually produce, start to produce enzymes, which is a, an, a genetic – that's actually an environmental um, adaptation. It's not natural, and I'll explain that in a minute. We chew the food. That masticates. It goes down the esophagus into what's called the upper cardiac portion of the stomach where the enzymes present in the food – uh, are supposed to break down the food. Now, enzymes are chemical agents that have both a chemical function and a biological function. They are responsible for over 25,000 different chemical processes in the body. Uh, everything from thinking to blinking requires an enzyme. They're that important. They're catalysts. They speed up reactions inside the body. And they are essential to life. And they are the difference between, say, stones, plants, and people. All living things require enzymes, all unliving things don't. So it is really the bridge between the living and the dead or the organic and the inorganic. Now, every species on the planet, they, they eat their food in a live, enzymatically rich state. So if I'm a zebra and I knock down a tiger for dinner, I eat the entrails where the enzymes and probiotics are and then I eat the carcass. If I'm a bear eating a salmon or a blueberry, I eat that, which is an omnivore. So the tiger is a carnivore. The, the omnivore will it eats it in a live state. It eats salmon raw. Eats the blueberries raw. If the uh, if I'm a horse or a cow and I'm eating grass, or you know, I, I try to get the most enzymatically rich. That's why they like the fresh grass, the, the rich, the, the the new leaves and that sort of stuff, which is very enzymatically potent. Now humans, um, who number one problem in humanity throughout history has been starvation, uh, not getting enough nutrients and, and nutrient deficient uh, or and calorie deficient based diseases. Now we've solved that in the industrialized world by creating what I call the industrial food complex, which is the growing manufacturing and uh, distribution of food, which is really advanced and it solved a lot of those problems, but it created some other ones. Number one, we cook all our food and we uh, irradiate all our food. So basically we knock out all the enzymes in our food consumption. Now what happens is our body has to then produce its own enzymes. Now this has led to our pancreas being four and a half times the size of any other species at the same weight. So in other words, we've adapted to this industrialized food slightly. 
And the problem with that is, is without enzymes, when we have to manufacture our own, we have less enzymes to perform the other chemical reactions inside the body outside of digestion. And I'll get to that in a minute. So that first 30 to 60 minutes that the foods got to the cardiac portion, the enzymes present are supposed to break that down. So right off the bat, a lot of people are having indigested food off the bat because their key amino acids aren't crossing. And I'll get to that in a minute. The next phase of the digestion, you have about uh, hydrochloric acid comes in at 30 to 60 minutes. Hydrochloric acid has two distinct functions. Number one, it disinfects. It kills her, uh, parasites, bacteria, other pathogens, bugs, whatever might be coming into the system. It is a big part of our immune system. And the second feature is it changes the pH of the food so that some enzymes will become react or deactivated and some will be activated as it goes through this process and helps break down the food further. Now, if you don't produce enough acid, what's going to happen is you're going to get acid reflux and heartburn. And people go, well, why is that? That doesn't make sense because my doctor will give me a proton pump, which is a, a which is a HCL blocker. You see, your body, your your stomach has a little sphincter on the top of it, and it closes when enough hydrochloric acid is present in the food, and it stays open if you're not digesting properly or you're fermenting. You don't have enough acid, and it creates a gas and pops it open. And that's where you get this heartburn and burning. And that's a very serious condition, GERD, acid reflux, heartburn, all this stuff that you really need to adjust that. And most people, by the time they're 30 or 40, do not produce enough hydrochloric acid. There's a variety of reasons for that. We won't get into all the details, but the bottom line is that's a common element. So first, don't have enough enzymes present. Second, don't have enough hydrochloric. The food then is added uh, what's called bicarbonate buffers, which is minerals to prevent you from having ulcers. It reduces that acidic uh, food combination now because it's all kind of mashed up and it goes into your intestinal tract it's the next stage and in the intestinal tract this is where the probiotics the good bacteria will start to break down that food into its final ingredients and transport it over the intestinal linings into building blocks and energy uh production now in your 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 uh digestive canal or inside your intestines you are going to have what's called 10% good, 10% bad, and 80% opportunist when you're talking about bacteria. You'll hear it referred to as the microbiome or gut flora or these type of things. Now, the thing is, is if you've been sick or you've taken any kind of antibiotic, which is most of us have, and antibiotics have saved millions of lives. They're great. They're wonderful. They've helped so many people. But the overprescription of them has caused a problem. And that is when you take an antibiotic, it wipes out the good, the bad, the ugly, the opportunities. It, it, it destroys just about anything. And then what happens if you're not consciously looking at repopulating your good bacteria, you can get bacteria overgrowth, you can get yeast infections, you can get excessive bloating, gas, skin conditions, all types of stuff when you have what's called a dysbiosis, a disbalance of the bacteria in your culture. This, you can also get things like parasites and things like that can actually lead to leaky gut, uh, various food things like glyph uh, glyphosates found in a lot of gluten products. Uh, some of these chemical agents and stuff. So the bottom line is um, these are some of the agents that mess that up. So then the final stage is you get through what's called peristaltic contraction. That's how the food moves through the body. It's a contraction of the smooth muscle tissue to move the food and out, and that's where you get to elimination. Now, if you have an interruption in the microbiome, you're not breaking your food down, you're not hydrated properly, you sit a lot, you don't exercise a lot, oftentimes you end up with problems going to the bathroom or, or you know you you have constipation issues and it's very very common in women and so what we've done as a company is we've addressed each one of these issues independently and also as a collective whole some people go down like a gut reset and that sort of stuff and this is exactly what happened to me and it's what's happened to literally thousands of people get this 12 percent of all uh, emergency hospital visits today in the united states are gastrointestinal related issues. That's a one in over one in 10 people going to the emergency ward is because something's wrong with their digestive system. And about 95 million Americans on any given day are suffering from some sort of digestive distress. So the three big things to correct it is enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and high quality probiotics. Those three things are usually the foundation of any great gut reset or gut health program. Now, one thing you said a minute ago, so I'm going kind of, I've been kind of paying attention to what you've been saying all along. So when they eat cooked foods, do raw foods have better enzyme 
characteristics or better enzyme capability? It, well, yes and no. If it's actually a true raw food. So, for example, I'm here on my balcony. Uh, I have a nice deck here on my place in Vancouver. I have tomato plants. And I have some herbs and some cucumbers and things that I grow. Now, when I go pick something off one of those uh, you know, vegetables. I picked some tomatoes off. Number one, I'm getting a massive amount of smell. I take it, I taste it. It's enzymatically rich. It just feels amazing. It's, it's nothing like you get in a tomato and it's in a store. Well, why is that? Well, with raw foods, the, the technical theory is that yes, the enzymes are present, but going back to our industrial food problem, we have a couple of issues. First and foremost, oftentimes foods are sprayed with herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. Uh, even the organic uh, grown food, the USDA allows 50 different chemical agents on that food. So it may not or may be there. So just so you know, these agents interrupt enzymatic activity in bugs. That's how it kills the bugs. So if you're taking that and you're eating these foods, you're getting that in addition to the raw food, which is interrupting the enzymatic process of that food, of you, of bugs, whatever it happens to be. Second thing. Um, a lot, a lot of times when food is transported from one place to the other, it's been irradiated to protect it. That's to kill the bugs and bacteria, but they also kill the enzymes because that preserves the food because otherwise the food will start to rot on the shelf. So that's another issue of the industry. So you're not truly getting a raw food. And then the final piece is many of the foods that we eat today are grown in what's called monoculturing. In other words, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's foods that are designed. And what's happened over time, get this. The U.S. government reported in the early 1900s that they were concerned about the, the protein degradation inside of wheat. Wheat was about 90 percent protein at the time. Today it is less than 7 percent. So when you drive uh, monoculturing foods, when you grow them that way, what happens and you use you know, fertilizer and agents and chemical agents and strains and all that sort of stuff, various hybrids and all the kind of things that they do and have successfully done that to grow all this food, what happens is your food, your, the food will give up protein content in order to create the enzymes to grow the food that is being grown on mineral deficient soil. And anybody in the farming industry knows that uh, mineral rich soil is a critical component to having great food. And there's a big crisis happening, particularly in North America, about the degradation of soil uh, and and because of large spread monoculturing. So although we've solved these problems, we've interrupted the enzyme content and we've interrupted uh, and we've added a lot of chemical agents, which are also deteriorous to our food production. And that leads us with a couple problems improper enzymes in the food that we're having, low protein content in the food that we're having. Superfoods are really foods that are grown in the wild that haven't been tampered by people. And if you go to a Mennonite farm, for example, and have a tomato or a cucumber, it's a completely different experience than you had with a tomato or a cucumber in, 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 in a grocery store, in an organic grocery store. That seed has been passed on. It's been grown in natural conditions. It's, it's unbelievable. It, it feels like a superfood. And that's because it just hasn't gone through factory farming. And so these are the challenges that we face as a population. Nobody's really talking about it, uh, except the results we keep seeing more and more people with digestive issues, more and more people with obesity, um, more and more people suffering from um, depression, which is related to gut health. And this affects so many people, especially with their busy lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had this problem, I ran into this problem, I corrected the problem. And, uh, and and have been really passionate about it because we don't really think about our digestive systems, how they work. And if they don't work, that's it. You're dead. You're done. It's over. And it's the key element to make everything else work in the body. So you're 50 years old and you've been, you know, just living like a standard American diet. And you're like hearing this information and you're like going, oh, great. I'm host, you know, like, so now what? Yeah, great question. Well, first thing, if you're listening to this podcast, you're in the right spot. It means that you are proactive and you're not what I would call the average American diet because diet is not just what you eat. It's also what you consume mentally. And that means you're looking and you're searching and there are always answers if you continue to search and you continue to look. I hear all kinds of people saying I've tried everything uh, and nothing works. That's not true. You've tried a lot of things, but you can try the next thing. And, you know, I, I know what that struggle feels like. I, I've 
feel that's frustrating. So I think the important thing is to recognize it's okay where you are, but if you do not take action and you do not, you know, start making adjustments, you're headed to what the New England Journal of Medicine reported and uh, Oshansky is that the disability adjusted life expectancy for United uh, for Americans is 60 years old. That means you will be on some form a prescription medication and will be dealing with some sort of disabled that disability that really compromises your life, whether that's you know, digestive related issues, whether it's uh, inflammation issues, whether it's depression issues, whatever, or, or all of the above and, and beyond, the bottom line is that's where you're going to end up. And we want to reverse that trend. Obviously, it's not just about the quantity of life. It's about the quality of mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. So to, to answer your question, so I know it's a little bit philosophical, but I think that's really important to get people's get their heads around. I think the first thing that you got to do is you want to remove the most inflammatory agents inside your body. Uh, I think getting a naturopathic doctor to do some testing about your epigenetics and genetics to see which types of foods are actually right for your body and which ones are causing problems. Um, If you're dealing, uh, I think the other issue that people are uh, not taking into consideration, people just don't drink enough water. I know that sounds so stupid, but really... Uh, and I mean filtered water. I mean water that does not have chlorine and fluoride in it. If you have chlorine and fluoride in it, you need to get filtration. And in fact, I think if you're in any city or any not on a well that's been tested, I think you really need to get high quality filtration to get high quality water inside your body. You'll drink more of it. It tastes better and it feels better and it avoids using all the plastics uh, which have high levels of estrogens, which really mm-hmm. affect birth rates and things like that. Go check out the disappearing male the effects of plastics. It's a CBC documentary by the U.S. Gov- or Canadian government, which illustrates the negative effect on the birth rate and on particularly on males with high levels of estrogen. Um, it's 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 unbelievable, and it's happening to all species. So, um, for example, all men. Uh, I know there's a lot of women on this podcast, but you know, a lot of men across the board at every age are about 30 percent lower in testosterone than they were or in the 1970s. And that's directly related to the amount of estrogens in her life. And of course, high estrogens is also a big issue for women as well. It leads to excessive weight gain, can lead to depression, all sorts of metabolic issues. And people are drinking bottled water out of plastic bottles. And I think that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. So you want to eliminate that. You want to get high quality water. You want to reduce the inflammatory agents in your body. And then you want to look at resetting your gut. And resetting your gut, I would say, you want to set aside about 90 days you want to, on some form of uh, restrictive diet, a restrictive diet, and that means you're not taking the inflammatory products, uh, the foods you know, that disrupt you, and get a professional to help you. And, you know, take, take enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and probiotics uh, daily, every day for those 90 days. And it's, it's phenomenal what happens to people. It's like, wow, I never knew that I could actually get rid of the gas, the bloating, the hydro, you know, the acid reflux, the heartburn, all these digestive things. All of a sudden, my stomach goes down and I, or I can go out in public and eat food and I don't feel like I'm going to, uh, you know, I, I'm going to embarrass myself with, with gas or something like that, or I'm burping up or whatever it happens to be. And a lot of people, they, they, they suffer in silence and it's unfortunate and that leads to, you know, really big conditions. And what if you don't have any symptoms? So say you're, you know, you've quote unquote healthy, you are um, asymptomatic and you just want to take it to the next level. Same thing or a different recommendation? Yeah, well, it depends what your goals are. So for example, if one of the things that's really interesting on the anti-aging side, because most people like, you know, we're we're like, I think we're both, we're not kids anymore. (laughs) And so... (laughs) Oh, we start to notice that things don't, you know, our skin doesn't look the same. Maybe we don't have as much energy or whatever. And one of the big components of of aging is actually a buildup of undigested protein inside the body. And most people on the performance side are conscientious of their macros. They're following some form of dietary philosophy, you know, whatever their, whatever's the most suitable diet for them. But the biggest issue with that is, is, is interesting enough is protein breakdown and digestion. So when you don't, when you're not properly digesting and breaking down your protein, what happens is you have a much more difficult time making your nails, your hair, and your skin have the elasticity that it used to have. And so now there's a focus on, you know, adding collagen and 
you know, whether it's micro needling and all these kind of different things. And now they've, they've got laser caps that you can wear in your head for your hair. But at the end of the day, what's happening is you're not providing your nutrients, particularly your skin and your hair, which, which are going to show what's going on inside your body better than anything else. Your skin is the largest organ in the body. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we get buildup of actually protein inside the cells and it starts making the uh, losing the elasticity and it also starts slowing down energy metabolism in the body. And so the best way to combat that is through uh, a high component of uh, a proteolytic enzymes and proteolytic enzymes are enzymes that break down protein. Now, I got into proteolytic enzymes because I was into bodybuilding and I wanted to build more muscle uh, and recover faster. And we found that it made you recover faster, you had more energy and stuff. And then it turns out um, that had applications uh, in a variety of different areas, uh, which is particularly in, in medical industry, medical treatment uh, in cancer patients. And I'm not saying we're curing anything or anything like that, but it was useful in that. It was also useful as an anti-aging component of reducing the protein inflam inflammatory proteins in the body. So inadvertently, I was trying to figure out how to make people bigger, faster, and stronger. And it turned out regular people really benefit from our enzyme product by, by having all these proteases. And you want three, you want protease 3.0, 4.5, 6.0. Those work in the different pHs we talked about in the digestion. And the other thing is, is a lot of people, myself included, um, had an issue with lipase. We weren't able, I wasn't able to convert fats uh, very well in my body for whatever reason, whether it was chemical damage or lifestyle or genetics, didn't really work down. And so you know, there's about four different lipases that do different uh, enzymatic processes inside the body. And uh, we started playing around with those and we'd take those and all of a sudden your, your skin looks better and your hair looks better and, you know, you, you're, you're more flexible. And you're like, really? From enzymes? Is that possible? Same thing with the protease. And so, and then finally there's amylase, which if you're having trouble metabolizing carbohydrates, amylase is what breaks down, uh, breaks that down. And a lot of people uh, who find that they're very sensitive to carbohydrates usually it's because they don't have enough amylase inside their body. So that's another key enzyme that you can break down. And there's a variety of other ones like, you know, um, you know, I think one of our products, we have 17 different enzymes in it that will cover virtually anybody in any single food uh, dietary choice. So um, when you take that product, mm -hmm. okay, like how many should you take a day? And tell us a little bit about that, because I'm going to be honest, I was confused, and yeah. I got started on taking those, and I felt that, like, I don't know, I, I wasn't sure how many to take, so it said, I can't remember the dosage on the bottle, but maybe it said, take five to ten. Well, I'm like, okay, do I take five or do I take ten, you know? So, can we talk about, like, dosing and... I'm yeah. probably skipping ahead, which I'm sorry, but I have so many questions for you. <laughs> That's okay. So, like, what? How do you decide? Do you take five or ten? Uh, well, there's a couple things that determine the effectiveness of a digestive health product. Um, when it comes to protease, there's this thing called HUTs, and so the more HUTs, that's the enzymatic. Uh, capacity of a product is going to determine. So, if you got say. Um, a hundred thousand huts per cap you will need one to three capsules per meal okay okay that's typically what's going to break down that food um there are benefits so if you eat three times a day you, you would eat somewhere between one and, and nine caps uh before you before your meals like you know one to three on each one of those meals if you eat five times a day it's going and usually the more that you eat the smaller the meals the less that you eat, usually the larger the meals. That's the way it usually works. And so you can kind of get a feel for it. Um, the other thing is, is there's another benefit by taking enzymes on an empty stomach. What's really fascinating is that there, uh, years ago, Dr. Linus Pauling, a two-time Nobel Prize winner, um, who developed orthomolecular psychology, psychiatry, which was literally treating um, all sorts of mental conditions with nutrition. He found that these are nutrition defi deficiencies. Him, Abram Hoffer, Dr. Hawkins, they all worked this stuff out and turned the whole psychiatric community inside out. Now, why am I telling you that? Well, one of the things that they discovered is by taking uh, high dosages of any particular product, you would eventually break the GI barrier. So in that case of vitamin C, they would dose people up to 10, 15,000 milligrams. And then what happens as soon as they got the runs, 
they would bring back the dosage and then they would continue at that dosage when they got the runs again they would continue cut it down until they only needed the minimal viable option so this is a way that they got to optimizing nutrient component and, and there's a lot of people that do this with particularly the non-toxic minerals now with enzymes there seems to be no level which will break the gi barrier i've personally tested myself on a thousand capsules a day don't do that Just don't try it <laughs> you have an incredible amount of energy i'll tell you that but I wanted to see if I would actually break the GI berry, and I don't, and you don't find enzymes in your stool, which means that the body is actually using those enzymes, not for digestion, but converting them into metabolic enzymes. So I've had a variety of people that's been able to heal scar tissue, um, that has cleared up brain fog, that have overcame depression. Now I'm not making claims or anything. These are just the reports that we get back on a weekly basis uh, by adding, uh, I suggest people take five, caps twice a day on an empty stomach do that for 90 days uh in addition to before caps and it's amazing it just it, it i take them before my workouts for example I'll take five caps before my workout i i'm just fly through my workouts because again these enzymes are converted into metabolic processes instantly because there's no food there and uh you, you you actually can actually feel and see the difference uh and over time so most people it's going to take about 90 days to really reset their gut and i believe for most people, they're better off with a higher dosage for those things for those days, and then you cut back to what's the effective dosage for you. Okay, cool. So, are by doing this, are you able to reverse any or clear out any of those stored proteins that are creating problems? And are you able to reverse any of your aging like symptoms showing up, particularly on your face or elsewhere in your body with like skin elasticity and things like that? Yeah, that's that's what people have reported for the last 15 years that I've been doing this. And you can literally see what I, what I particularly notice with people. Now, I'll, 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 I'll take you through the processes. Let's say you're doing a high dosage of like a gut, seat, gut reset program that we uh, encourage people to do. Your first, say, one to two weeks will involve one of two things. Either one – you're going to go to, you're going to develop a new relationship with the bathroom. <laughs> and that means you start moving a lot of stuff. Or at first, there will be almost like a war going inside in your body, especially if you're combining it with our, our, our high quality probiotic. You'll, you might feel, you, some people will get a, they'll get a few skin breakouts. They might get a little gassy or bloated for a little bit. And that'll last for maybe one to two weeks. This is what, that's with people who are very compromised digestive systems. And what we found is usually they need all three enzymes, HCL and probiotics to get particularly past that first, you know, one to two weeks. Usually after that, the people that have that challenge, that's when they start seeing the, the extra waste coming out of the system. So usually what happens, bloating gas will eventually go away after two weeks to the four week part. And then by um, the second, I would say the second month, this is where people start to notice changes in physiology. Usually they start sleeping less, they don't wake up with brain fog. Um, oftentimes bad breath will start to go away if that, that's an issue. And by the third month, this is where people start to see particularly the eyes and the skin start to take on a certain glowing tone. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting. People go, wow, what's going on with you? You're like, you seem so vibrant in life. Now, that seems, that's, I mean, that sounds kind of hokey almost. It's kind of anecdotal. But I think it's something that we all pick up on. And one of the reasons that we uh, admire maybe the attractiveness of youth and why it's used so much in marketing is it's actually capturing. The average person at 40 years old has 30% of the enzymes that they had at birth. And that's why we heal very quickly. That's why we recover quickly. That's why when you were 18, you go out drinking all night and get up the next morning, and go to work, It'll be fine. You just can't do it when you're 40. You definitely can't do it when you're 60. Well, why is that? That's because you do not have enough enzymes to actually metabolize the, uh, the chemical agents inside your body. And everybody goes through that decline at a different rate based on their lifestyle. And what happens when you start reversing that, you, when you stop, requiring your metabolic enzymes to break down uh, the food in your body uh, you know you're you're they're actually able to go and repair your organs they're able to go and repair your skin they're able to go and repair your hair that's the benefit of fasting fasting simply reduces the uh 
the the drain of digestion. Digestion takes up about 75% of your your metabolic energy. And so when people fast, why they healed quickly is because now those enzymes, instead of being used to digestion, can go and fix the body. And so uh, a lot of people are turning to intermittent fasting today as a way to combat the chemical overload from our lifestyles, freeing up enzymes. And we just found a way to accelerate it. And so that's why um, high doses of enzymes are, are very effective in that process. So if we were to tell the ladies listening, like for the ideal 90-day protocol, do you have like a PDF or something that they can access yeah. to actually read the whole thing and adopt that lifestyle? Because I want to do it. Like I yeah, would love we do, to do actually. that. We have, um, and I'm going to tune everybody into this at the end of our podcast. Um, we actually have a, a highly trained customer support group. We have a variety of different conditions. We have uh, what you can do to for a 90 day reset. We have candida protocol programs. We have a whole variety of uh, things that people might suffer from. And uh, our agents know what knows, know what's going on. I've trained all of them. I actually answer all the questions personally. And uh, we put them in a database. We, I think I'm up to over 6,000 questions now that I think I've answered related to digestive health. And so what we've done is we've condensed them. Now, and typically when that feedback comes in with the personal person that comes in, it goes to our agents. They'll find it. They'll either know it. And if they don't know it, they're going to come back to me and I'm going to answer that personally. But we do have a 90-day program that's fantastic. That's the one I use to rebuild myself. That's uh, the one Matt used, my business partner, to rebuild his body. And uh, – Literally thousands of our clients have done the same thing. And I think that's sufficient time to really regenerate and start to see uh, extraordinary benefits. That's awesome. Okay. I totally want to do that. I just had results from a food sensitivity come back. Okay. I did a, um, I don't know if you've heard of Loris, Lorisian Labs and it's in the UK and they have a very high accuracy rate of, of the blood food sensitivity. They tested me for 208 different foods and some of like certain things came back, which were, you know, known like wheat, dairy, um, can't remember what else, but almonds came back, which I know can be inflammatory and contain a lot of oxalates and, and different things. But now I'm like, okay, I knew that something was going on cause I could just feel inflammation. And so now I'm on this quest you know, to, to make a difference and to see what I can do. And I tried doing carnivore because everybody's like, oh, you should try it. And I'm like, yeah, it's just not me. I live on a farm. You know, we grow our own stuff. Our tomatoes are going to be coming out in about a month. And, you know, that's just not what I'm about. And, and it didn't work for me. But so now I'm on this quest. So I look forward to seeing that. So what is your thoughts about that whole carnivore craze? Well, I think there is... Um... Every single diet um, has what I call benefits and liabilities. And so I think a lot of people that are moving over to a carnivore diet, there's a couple of uh, what I can see are the advantages. One, it's a, what I call a high satiety diet. You feel full a lot and it takes a lot of energy to break down meat. So what happens is a lot of people experience weight loss which is probably the number one motivation for people. Number two, when you eliminate all the restrictive inflammatory agents from the diet, all of a sudden inflammation goes down, which also causes weight loss. And of course also because when you have no carbohydrates inside the system, you're gonna be a loss of water as well. So those initial results from those type of diets are extremely positive for people who are suffering from a variety of inflammatory conditions and stuff. And and there's big advantages by any form of restrictive dieting when you eliminate the inflammatory agents. And so that's a that's a win. Uh, the challenge with any diet, and it doesn't matter if you're a carnivore or a vegetarian like myself, the reality is, is you're going to run into problems uh, with every diet. And so the question is, is how are you addressing the limitations of the, your preferred dietary choice? And so I believe that you can be healthy on almost any uh any diet that's outside of what I would say the standard American diet, if you're following whatever fits your genetics and your epigenetics and your lifestyle and your choices, that's great. If you are providing a professional insight by getting the testing about what nutrients are you absorbing, what ones are you not absorbing, what agents are causing inflammation, and then adjusting your diet based on the data for you, 
then you are going to be able to be successful. So I think like all these diet crazes, what typically happens, and this is something I think is really important. People have to understand statistics in the bell curve. So the reality is, is in today's WWW land, uh, you know, about 95% of the people are going to fit within the major part of the bell curve. And, uh, you know, if you remember that from statistics back mm -hmm. in the day. And then you've got the 2.5 on one end and the 2.5 on the other. The 2.5 on the high end are the people that are on the sites, uh, you know, saying this diet saved my life. It cured this disease. I got over this problem. All my problems went away. And they become the advocates and promoter of that diet because it's legit for them. Then there are the 2.5. On the worst end, that it, this diet almost killed me, I felt terrible, blah, blah, blah. And, and then you have everybody else at some range in between. And so it's really important not to get too swayed by public opinion um, because, again, you're always dealing with the extremes as the advocates of any mm. particular diet. Mm -hmm. And that, that caveat emptor, buyer beware, is make sure that you're taking that into account. And the only way to really take that into account is get a professional in your life, get an ND, get some testing, and have someone walk you through the process that's right for you. It's the only way out of what I call, you know, the fad diet program. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I had some testing done. And so even like the genetic testing, and I'm hosed. <laughs> 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 that's why I'm so committed to, you know, just trying to learn and grow and be the best I can. So, um, awesome. So what, like with some parting words, like what advice would you tell somebody listening to just get started besides, you know, going to a naturopath? That's always a good choice. Um, but any other lifestyle like recommendations. I mean, I've seen you ate it and we're going to put some pictures of you on, on the show notes page because you are just like a specimen of health. And I think so many people would like to be able to, you know, take their life to the next level. So what kinds of things yeah. would you recommend? We've talked about water and different supplements. Is there anything else? Yeah, I do. So I do a couple of things that I think are really important. I think everybody can do it. I have a 15 minute a day routine that I perform every day and anybody can do this. And I think it's the most transformative process that you can do. And I'll give you the briefing. And if you want more, we'll, we'll give you to the links that people can kind of go into the details. I've got a whole video on it. But basically, I get up every day and I practice, have a deep breathing practice. And I incorporate that with meditation, but deep breathing. I jump on a mini trampoline every morning for 10 minutes at least, sometimes 30, but 10 minutes usually. If you can do 10 minutes, it's great. And I do uh, kind of deep, deep breathing. I drink a liter of uh, fresh ionized water right after. And I add some uh, my vitamins and minerals to it, some liquid vitamins and minerals that we produce. I put right in there. It gives me all my trace minerals and all my key B vitamins and things I miss from my diet. And I drink that down. I make myself a really nice smoothie with uh, protein, fats, fresh fruit, and I drink that. It, it, the whole thing takes 15 minutes. You get up, do your breathing, jumping on the rebounder, drink the water, have the vitamins, uh, and then I take that. And, of course, I include my enzymes, uh, probiotics, and hydrochloric acid. I do that every single day. If you do that, have a big salad uh, once a day and, like, maybe for the afternoon and, and – you know, whatever choice of food that you like for an evening meal, if you use that as your base, you are going to make a radical transformation. It's so simple, it's easy, and everybody can do it. And how long do you do the breathing exercises? Well, I, for what I suggest for people is you just actually can do them right while you're bouncing on the trampoline. Uh -huh. And this, this is way better than using stimulants for coffee or things like that to get energized. You actually just super oxygenate your body because we sit a lot and we're only getting about 30% of the oxygen in our body. And the reason why we're tired and we're sluggish and we can't move or we don't have energy or we brain fog, we don't have enough oxygen. So you get on a mini trampoline, jump up and down, deep breathing. And uh, it's, it seems a little weird at first, but you cannot be unhappy while you're doing it. You feel great and it's amazing. And then you rehydrate and then you make sure you eat, all, you eat a good healthy meal and a good healthy salad with all the phytonutrients and have what you want in the evening. That's it. And then when you're doing that, you're also doing some lymphatic um, support, yes. lymphatic drainage. So let me ask you. So I have a mini tramp. I don't use it. Um, but is that any different than if you were to go out and say run? 
It is because the thing about a mini trampoline, you're getting uh, twice the amount of contractions. You're getting acceleration, deceleration, and gravity are working in unison, and you're not pounding on any of your joints. So one of the reasons why it's so successful, especially for a lot of people starting out that may not have an exercise background, is that you're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to damage yourself. You do want a high quality one. Uh, I get uh, David Hall's Cellar Sizer. It's the best one I know on the market. It's virtually indestructible. Um, you pay more for it, and it'll never wear out. And uh, I don't get any money from Dave. He's just an, a, one of the most vibrant, energized people I've ever met. That's all he does is mini trampoline, and he's I think he makes the best one on the market today. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then let the listeners please know where they can find you. Yeah, so if you go to bioptimizers dot com slash high energy um what will happen is you'll be invited to actually pick up uh my 84 day course i actually go into those routines i actually go into the 90 day program the gut series i talk about enzymes probiotics hydrochloric i talk about everything inside that course so that you can understand digestion from the inside out and all the different things that i learned and like i said it's five to 15 minute videos that break down everything that i do on a daily basis, and we've literally helped transform over 50,000 people's lives with that course. It's free to everybody on your show. And uh, of course, we've also included a high energy 20, 20% 20 off any particular products from Bioptimizers in initial order. All are backed by a 100% guarantee. So in other words, you buy that product, 365 day guarantee. A year from now, if you said it didn't work for you, we return it for a full refund. And we have, we'll fix your digestion guarantee. If you buy any of our products, what, you know, whether it's probiotics or enzymes or hydrochloric acid or, you know, gluten guardian, whatever it happens to be, um, and that didn't work for you, and you call our, our agents, we'll talk to you, find out what you were taking it for, and we'll suggest a product for you, we'll send you a free bottle of that to see if that works for you as well, uh, and at no charge, and if that didn't work, it, you still get your money back. So the bottom line is, is we, we're confident that we can fix your digestion. It's about making sure you have the right product, talking to one of our agents, and then uh, getting the right uh, product for you in your life. That's awesome. So you guys like basically customize your, your routine or your recommendations for people depending on their symptoms and goals? Correct. Exactly. That's fantastic. And are, can people like stalk you anywhere on social? <laughs> yeah, well, you can go to uh, the Bioptimizers Facebook page and that's where we're kind of really turning out our stuff. And then I have what's called the Awesome Health Podcast. And basically, I just interview someone once every month that's usually made a difference in my own life, someone that's impacted me that I've worked with and, uh, you know, naturopathic doctors and things like that that might break down a specific type of testing or someone who's had a breakthrough in a particular product that I don't produce. I was like, hey, you know what? This is something I use. You learn all about it. I, I love it. I love these guys. And and uh, we fix digestion, and but we, we also leverage a lot of other people's services and products. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think you guys are doing wonderful work. And I am going to definitely do your 90 day protocol so that I can, you know, heal this gut of mine from the damage of the foods and hopefully someday at least bring back almonds. Do you eat almonds? I do. Uh, we get them from Australia. Um, there's a really good ones. And then uh, we sprout them and they're, they're unbelievable. <laughs> Like they're, they're amazing almonds. So sometimes almonds, it's the inflammatory agents on them. So uh, we're really particular about it. My uh, fiance is meticulous about her almonds. She starts her day with almonds every day. Yeah. See, I started doing almond milk yogurt. And then have you heard of bitchin sauce? No, I, I want to know. I want to hear about it though. Oh my gosh. Okay. This company in Southern California and they created this sauce called Bitchin Sauce. They make it with almonds. It's available in our Costco and our like our local grocery stores. And I contacted the company just because I wanted one of their tea or their tank tops. And they sent me seriously twenty four containers of their sauce. It's wow. amazing. But now my test came back that I can't have almonds. So I'm just like, great, you know. Oh man. I know. I know. So well, I will get you fixed up. We'll get you fixed up. Cool. Awesome. Well, Hey Wade, I appreciate you so much with everything that you do and for honoring us with your time today. And I just look forward to just watching you guys, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks Tracy. Great to be here. Thank you so much. Make it a super day. 
Okay, that was awesome. I learned so much. He is a wealth of knowledge. His videos are absolutely incredible on his website. So you're going to go check it out. So it's bioptimizers.com forward slash high energy. So that's B I O P T I M I Z E R S dot com forward slash high energy and enter in the code high energy 20. So thanks so much for listening, you guys. I just love talking to these awesome people so that together we can create a healthier world. And if you like the show, please head on over to iTunes, leave us a rating and review. And if you have any great guests that I can talk to, send them my way at Tracy at high energy girl.com. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.